What's up, Squavians? It's your boy, Squavo, and today we are talking about one of my favorite things to talk about on this channel, and that is Seahawks that I think are going to have a really good year this upcoming football season. Let's get right into it. So first, in the comment section below, leave for me your top two offensive and defensive breakout players of 2020. Can include Russell Wilson, can include Bobby Wagner, but anyone else's free game. Let me know who you think is going to have an outstanding year for Seattle this season. Let's get it started on offense. The first name that is not going to be a big surprise to you guys, I think a lot of people are going to agree with this, but I don't know if you guys are going to agree with exactly how productive I think this individual is going to be. And that's DK Metcalf. Last year, he had 58 receptions for 900 yards and seven touchdowns. His route running was his issue coming out of Ole Miss. Now, in the NFL, he has an opportunity to work on his route running for an entire offseason. I understand there's social distancing, but with how he runs routes, with how fast this guy is, he's going to be at least six feet away from any defender anyways. So I can't wait to see what DK Metcalf breaks to the field this year. I think he has an outstanding season. I think he's Russell Wilson's number one target. I think he has 80 receptions for 1,200 yards and nine touchdowns. And if DK Metcalf is not the breakout player for Seattle, I look at the guy that we just signed but still hasn't played a snap for Seattle. And that's Carlos Hyde. I think he comes in. Last year, he had 1,070 yards. That was his highest of his career down in Houston and six touchdowns. I think he comes in modestly, reduces his yard output. I think he gets 600 because our running back core is extremely strong. Chris Carson is phenomenal as well as Rashad Penny, who will be back at some point this season. I think Carlos Hyde gets only 600 yards, but I think it's really good for a guy joining into this running back by committee. I think he has a tremendous impact. I think he ends up with five touchdowns this year, running and receiving, which is one less than he had last year, but I think it's going to have a tremendous impact for our roster. I think they're going to be crunch time touchdowns, and I think at least one or two of those is going to come against his former team in San Francisco. Now let's go to the defense. The number one guy that I have is a breakout player. <laughs> Now let's go to the defense. The number one guy that I have as a breakout player is Quinton Dunbar, and that's only if he's available. Obviously, last year he played 11 games. He had four picks, 37 tackles, and eight passes defense. What was really impressive about those 37 tackles, he can really play out on an island, and he got 31 of those solo, which is a great ratio for any player. I don't care who it is. 37 total tackles, 31 of those were solo. That means you're doing your job, and you're breaking down, and you're, and you're making secure tackles. That's why I love to see from my corners, especially how we like to use them. A lot of man coverage at times. So this year, my projected stat line for him, if he's able to play a full 16 game season, I think those four interceptions jumps to seven in a breakout year for Seattle. I think his 37 tackles turns into 48. And I think he over doubles his passes defense from last year, ending up with 19 compared to his eight from last season. I think having an opportunity to play in a, with a defense like Seattle coming from Washington, where now the IQ defensively is much, much higher. They have veteran leadership with Bobby Wagner. This defense is going to be talented this year. He's going to have an opportunity to jump into a starting spot across from a good corner. I think it's going to be a great fit for him as a contract season. He, he has money to make, and he wants to go out there and make it. So I think Quentin Dunbar has a breakout year for Seattle if he's able to play the entire season. The other player that I look to if Quentin Dunbar is unavailable to have a breakout year for Seattle, how about the poor man's Cam Chancellor himself, Quandre Diggs. He came in for Seattle in five games, had three picks, 21 tackles, one forced fumble, one fumble recovery, a touchdown, and three passes defensed. An outstanding stat line for just playing five games with Seattle. And he was traded halfway through the year, so he had to adjust on the fly. If he plays in 2020, a full 16 game season, I see Quandre Diggs having six picks, 42 tackles, three forced fumbles, two recoveries, two touchdowns, and 10 passes defense. Based on how he plays, he set the tone defensively for us in a couple of games, including that game at San Francisco that we won in overtime, the most exciting game of the season. Quandre Diggs set the tone with how physical he was over the middle. That's what we needed. That's why I say he's a poor man's Cam Chancellor, because Cam Chancellor used to tell receivers, running backs, tight ends, don't run over the middle or you're going to feel the pain because of it. So once again, my offensive standout players are DK Metcalf and Carlos Hyde. Defensively, I go Quentin Dunbar and Quandre Diggs. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Let me know in the comment section below your top two offense and your top two defensive breakouts for 2020. As always, go Hawks.